Hello everyone. Today we are going to cover some of the basics of NVH. Mostly the slides that we are going to cover today are the topics related to the basic fundamentals of NVH uh, like what is the definition of vibration, definition of noise, definition of harshness, uh, what NVH stands for and I'll try to make this video quick so that uh, you can get time for the division. So what is really NVH? Uh, NVH stands for noise, vibration, harshness. Vibration is uh, really it means shaking or trembling that can be felt when an object is move, moves back and forth up and down consistently. So for example if you have a beam like a cantilever beam and uh, let's consider this example in which the beam is uh, supposed to be let me just open up my okay so this is your cantilever beam okay and uh, it is fixed on one side there's uh, continue motion on uh, up and down motion so what will happen is that the beam itself will physically vibrate okay it will go up and down physically so this is called as vibration all right now what is noise noise is uh, what happens is at higher frequencies this vibration will be converted to noise so noise is nothing but a manifestation of the physical phenomena of vibration uh, and uh, that will happen at higher frequency mostly so that's what noise is it is an unpleasant sound uh, which is a not normal sound and uh, many times noise then hence can be used in order to identify whether the object under test or the device that you're trying to identify with the faults uh, is okay or not okay. So that's what noise is. Now harshness is really something which is uh, related to the noise but when you have some kind of shrill noise then you get you get harshness basically what happens is you get a much firmer response and uh, this will give the perception of noise which is uh, very shrill so the harshness part is really important for industries such as the bearing industry uh, in order to identify whether the bearing is uh, faulty or not so the, these are some of the basic definitions of uh, noise, vibrations and harshness. Uh, let's move on to some of the more uh, formal aspects of NVH uh, that are the fundamentals of NVH. So what is frequency and cycle? So one cycle is uh, the one time period or uh, when the vibration of an object completes uh, completes one period in that particular given second okay so let's look at this uh, through an example suppose I have uh, again a cantilever beam okay and if I am applying a force at the tip of this beam it is fixed on one end and this force is a function of time t okay now uh, this beam will keep on vibrating continuously the response if you look at the response of this beam uh, it will be something like this okay. and uh, when you look at the cycle of vibration or time period you have to basically go in and uh, clip one of these uh, the whole response so that what you get is uh, one time period over here okay and uh, the frequency is uh, basically converted in the frequency domain okay so most vibrations they consist of movements back and forth and uh, like i said it's, it is uh, some kind of force forcing function that that is applied and uh, every time the vibration component goes through its complete set of motions uh, and returns to its starting point it is called a cycle okay so this 
in this case the object that is vibrating it will vibrate in such a way that it starts at one point okay and it will start at this point okay and then it will move on and then it will end at the same location where it started okay and then it will continue something like this so this actually is uh, called one cycle of vibration so why is this cycle of vibration important to study and understand see what happens is uh, when an object is vibrating under human force then it will show some kind of response um, what we want to do is we want to analyze this response okay and uh, by uh, analysis what i mean is can we replicate this response in a mathematical model okay in order to replicate this response in a mathematical model you need to uh, identify uh, the characteristics of this response and uh, you need to form let's say uh, in very simplistic terms you need to define the response in an equation through an equation basically and once you once you get that uh, idea then you will understand why it is important to have a periodic response okay not all responses are periodic uh, when you consider uh, real life situations but what we are trying to do is we are trying to uh, ensure that uh, you know we can replicate the response in some way so that we can perform analysis and reduce the amount of vibrations uh, wherever required so without going in details of all this uh, right now you just need to understand that the vibrations uh, that are induced in your component they need to be identified through some cycles okay and one cycle is when it reaches uh, its starting point now the rate at which these cycles occur they are called as frequency okay so frequency is measured in cycles per second or uh, cps or hertz okay so if you look at the steering wheel this is a steering wheel okay uh, it is at null position or the neutral position right now then as you move along okay as you move along downwards this steering wheel is uh, again uh, at a different angle now it has gone to the say let's say to the right then again it will reach back up okay so it will reach its null or the neutral position then again it has gone up okay so it has uh, reach another position and again it has gone to the where it started okay so uh, this actually is uh, meant this actually shows uh, you know how many cycles it can cover within a given second okay or cycles per second is called as frequency so hence frequency is a reciprocal of the time period okay now the question can be asked uh, that why not say if the uh, if the cycle is you know why not the cycle getting completed at this point over here because it is again reaching the starting point okay see the reason behind that is because it needs to be repeated uh after this in a similar fashion so whether the cycle is repeating itself yes it is repeating but in an inverted way so it's not really completing one cycle okay so this is one cycle and then another cycle and then another cycle so that's how uh, this is the concept of frequency and cycle so what is resonance resonance uh, frequency you can see over here this is the suspension uh, frequency so what will happen is for each of the components that are present in your vehicle okay all these components will have their own uh, their own characteristic resonance so for example if you look at the suspension system of your vehicle okay 
if uh, there is a suspension system of your vehicle let's call this as a simple mck system okay and um, if you look at this suspension system it will have its own uh, characteristic uh, based on the material the stiffness and the damping that is present in that system okay so the response of this system uh, will reach a peak at certain frequency we will call it as omega n okay and that is irrespective of the loading of this system now let's look at this if uh, i excite this system near to the resonance the amplitude will, will be very high okay uh, so there are two frequencies that need to be taken care of here one is the resonance uh, one is the frequency of uh, the part that you are trying to analyze so in this case the suspension is that part and the second is the excitation frequency so the excitation frequency is totally dependent on your uh, forcing function okay so the f of t that is there so if i apply a forcing function f of t then uh, the frequency of excitation of this if it matches up with the frequency of the natural frequency of that object then there will be uh, resonance now resonance doesn't necessarily mean uh, that the response will reach in infinity okay resonance means uh, that you know there might be catastrophic failure uh, because the response might be very high uh, the characteristic or the attribute that reduces the resonance is damping so if you have sufficient damping in your system then even then even resonance cannot uh, break your system so uh, you know if you uh, in this case as you can see if your car is speeding at say i think 60 miles per hour okay or uh, maybe 65 miles per hour if it matches up with your suspension frequency for a long duration of time then what you are essentially doing is you are giving uh, um, the excitation at that natural frequency of the system for sufficient duration of time and uh, that means uh, which which is not necessarily a good thing so then you will have resonance 